Welcome everybody to our module 3 of the Electrical Engineering 3. And this module is broken up into three lessons where we are going to start with an introduction and then go into the other two lessons. So this lesson is just introducing the concept of what this chapter is really going to be about. We are going to be talking about interconnected systems. And to start off, I'm going to show you what an interconnector is really about. So in what you are seeing now as a diagram, you will see that I've got two generators or alternators as they can be called, one on the left and one on the right hand side. Then you have got a transformer on each side of that generator or alternator. Then you've got bus bar A and bus bar C on the other side with bus bar B right in the middle. So if you are looking at this scenario, our interconnector in this case is going to be the line or the cables that are running from generator one all the way up to generator two. So those will be including the transformers as well as all of those bus bars that you're seeing. And we call it an interconnector because it's connecting the one generation station to the other one. So the points that are coming up now are explaining exactly what I've said. What I just want you to be aware of is that in South Africa, we utilize 50 hertz as our frequency. So although other places will have 60 hertz, it's not within our country. So our interconnected system, we always want to make sure that they are always running at that nominal frequency of 50 hertz. If they are not, it means they become unbalanced and then we are going to have problems into our system. Then I'm going to show you the different type of interconnector systems that you can get. So this first one that you're seeing is basically what you were seeing before, but it's just thrown in differently in this SLD diagram. It's two generation stations, I've named them generator one and generator two. And then there is that line that you see that's written tie line. That is your interconnector between the two generating substations. So each one, you can see that there is a load on each substation that that generator is normally feeding. And then you've got that tie in line, which then connects generator one to generator two. So in case you lose generator one for whatever the reason is, you can still be able to supply the load of generator one via that tie in line or interconnector. Same thing if you had to lose generator two, then you could still be able to supply the load of generator two via that interconnector or tie in line. So this is really what the benefit of, of having an interconnected system. This scenario is a little bit different because it's really at your distribution level of your network. Now, what you see on top is it's written as substation would be your ESCOM substation or even a municipality substation where you've got a higher voltage that was coming in and it got stepped down to a certain voltage, either a 11, a 22 or a 33 kV voltage. Then it leaves that substation on both sides of it. So there's also one coming out on the left and one coming out on the right. And it basically is feeding in total what we call three distributors or three distribution transformers. And really those transformers are what gets fed into our household as the customers of ESCOM or the municipality. So what you have in this scenario then is you've got a ring network. Why is it a ring? Because from that substation, we went on, if you go on my right hand side first, we went to distributor one, then distributor two, then distributor three, and all the way back again to the substation. So if I had to have a problem between my substation and the first distributor, which is on my right hand side, it means that I will have an open uh, circuit on that side. Therefore, then that distributor will be fed from the left hand side going via the distributor three, then distributor two, then two distributor one. 
then this is slightly different because it gives you what we call the electrical grid. So it's got all the system of our electrical network into it. You will see that I've marked accordingly that we've got a generation and that is where the power is made. And the one that you are seeing in the picture is really a coal power generation sub power station. Then that is followed by our transmission network. Okay, so from generation, our power will go into what we call our transmission network. And then the transmission network is really what carries the huge lines or it goes across long distances. And then it will go to your distribution. Once it gets to your distribution, we can then be able to get our supply because it goes back to the slide that we've just seen where you had a distribution substation that goes out into your distributors and it will then supply the load, which is normally you and me at the end of that line. So this is really going to be looking now at why do we want to have interconnected systems? Well, if you were ESCOM or you were a municipality, you would want to have a reliability of supply as a first thing. So interconnected system helps you to achieve that because you always have more than either one generator feeding into your load or more than one transformer that can be able to cater for the load that you have. And then within that, you have all of these lines that you've put in as a redundant way in order to make sure that you always have a backup that remains available in the case of anything happening within your network. Then if your gen sets are very large, okay, and your gen sets are your generating substations. So instead of running all of them at not full load. You would rather have some of them offline and only run the ones that you require so that you bring the ones that are offline only once you've got network problems. Now, recently we are all aware that load shedding is back on, which means we really need those other gen sets to come in so that we can avoid the impact of the load shedding that is going to have onto the country as a whole. So because you've got these interconnected networks or systems, you don't need to operate so much onto your network because everything is already there. All you need to do is either just switch on a button or you always just leave them running so that in case one fails, you have got continuity of supply without even having to go and manipulate or go and do anything onto the network itself. Then that entire thing of paralleling these networks or equipments will allow you to have a lower cost of your infrastructure when you need to upgrade or when you need to add more loads onto your existing network. Then your availability and your redundancy in your new units always ensures that you have a continuity of power when you have one of them failing for you. So the last slide of this lesson is really going to be going into and looking at the electrical grid system because your electrical grid really is all that we talk about when we're talking about the distribution or transmission or generation of your power. So as a country, we've got ESCOM that supplies power to everybody and they do this by having those generation substations, which I really mainly in Bumalanga, Limpompo, as well as the one nuclear that's in Cape Town. Then all of that power needs to get to where our demand centers are. So Eastern Cape, East London, for example, is a demand center. That's where we are. And we don't have such power stations within the Eastern Cape. So what they do is that we have the high voltage lines, which is your transmission network, coming from those power stations in the three different provinces, being traveled all through the country so that you can get to the provinces that do not have those power stations in them. Then once we get to that, it will then go to our distribution substations so that the voltage can be stepped down to an acceptable voltage to supply our household and equipment that we have. So what we have in electrical grid or the nice thing about it is that you always have more than one path available. 
between any of your interconnected points. And that part really must be proportional to the power transmitted by each path that you require so that you ensure if you had to lose one, then your, all your load can still be catered for by the one that is left in there. And what you can do now, instead of in a generation substation having all six units running, if you see that there is no need, you can always put one or two units off to go and do your maintenance. And while you have the four running, are being assisted by the other substation or power station that is interconnected to it. Thank you very much. This was the last slide on the introduction of interconnected system or power transfer as we call it.